from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this morning, Texas Republicans advance new voting restrictions overnight after months of protests by Democrats. Plus, health officials are predicting nearly 100,000 COVID-19 related deaths between now and December 1st. I actually had one of those afternoon downpours yesterday here in the San Antonio area. Mike says more on the way. And if you have family or friends along the U.S. Gulf Coast, he's tracking Ida this morning. Good morning, everybody. It's Friday the 27th. Happy Friday. Thanks for joining us this morning. Uh, so you got rain. Mm -hmm. I did not, mm -hmm. but I had nice cloud cover. Mike yes. didn't either. Nope. 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 No nope. rain. Nope. Huh. Steven? Uh, didn't notice anything. You didn't no. notice anything. <laughs> and you only live like four or five miles from me. Yeah, so it's a little cloudy. Yeah, but some folks picked up some fairly uh, decent rain. Uh, Justin Horn was talking about yesterday. He picked up about three tenths of an inch of rain in one of those storms that uh, moved on through there. So that's going to be the situation like we're talking about again today. More of these showers and the thunderstorms popping up. Not everybody's going to see it, but if you do, you could have a couple of decent downpours here and there. 78 degrees right now. 80 Stinson, uh, 78 up the road at Canyon Lake. And we do have a light amount of mold now. As we start to get more of this rain, mold may start to creep up over the next couple of days just as the moisture in the ground uh, starts to kind of you know, help out with that mold. Temperature is going to stay pretty steady this morning, uh, partly mostly cloudy skies. And then later on this afternoon, more of these scattered showers and thunderstorms. Now, yesterday, so some areas got rain and then right next to that still had some hot temperatures. We did make it up to 97 again yesterday, but uh, it's looking like more cloud cover will hang around today and that should keep temperatures right around the mid 90s. And yes, we have a football forecast tonight. Uh, it's going to be about 90 degrees at kickoff by halftime 86. And again, a few leftover showers scattered about the area. Probably you know, the, the way the odds are probably won't affect your game, but just uh, something to kind of keep in mind there. So it's going to be kind of a sultry evening evening for football. More on the weekend forecast and the latest on Tropical Storm Ida coming up in just a couple of minutes. And we've got uh, problems on the roads already. So traffic authority, Stephen Cavazos. You know, the up? big the big thing, Mike, uh, was out there towards Seguin yesterday for anybody that was up. Well, that saw that five vehicle crash that led to three deaths. Right now, we're going to go in and take a look at our roadways here in town. Loop 410 at Fredericksburg. Uh, yeah, right now it's pretty calm. I'm not spotting any crashes here in town. The roads at Transguy do appear. The morning commute is pretty smooth at this hour, but uh, let's go ahead and take a look at our map. A lot of green on the screen. Uh, now, again, we want to take you to that video from yesterday where that fiery crash happened out towards Seguin. Now, we can tell you that three people did die. Of course, this was a massive crash that led to big delays, and you can see from that video pretty shocking stuff right there. Flumes of smoke uh, billowed in the air for quite a while, and we can tell you that the road there is still closed off. I did talk to our friends over at Transguide. They did tell us uh, that as of 1.30 this morning, the Seguin Police Department still does have that road closed off. So uh, be prepared. This is out towards those eastbound lanes. Again, we're going to find out exactly how this is going to be impacting that morning commute. But let's go ahead and bring it back here to the maps if we can and show you those inbound times from Seguin. If you're going to be traveling to that downtown San Antonio area is still pretty good right now. 29 minutes, 22 in Lavernia and 29 coming in from Floatisville this morning. But uh, one last look here at Transgate Loop 410 at Fredericksburg. Pretty quiet start here in town. And again, we're going to be watching those roads closely over in I-10. Mike, uh, Mark, pardon me, and Seth. Steven. New overnight at the state capitol in Austin, Republicans advanced new voting restrictions late last night. The bill includes a ban on drive through voting and empowering poll watchers. This after protests by Democrats who recently returned from a 38 day walkout. The nearly 50 page bill passed the Texas House on a 79 37 mostly party line vote and now goes to the Senate. Republican Governor Greg Abbott says he will sign the measure that is on track to reach his desk by early September if not sooner. Texas is now set to become the last big GOP state to pass tighter voting laws driven by former President Donald Trump's claims that the 2020 election was stolen. 434, this is a live look at Kabul International Airport this morning. Evacuations in Afghanistan have resumed as the U.S. military prepares for more potential attacks after those deadly bombings yesterday. The militant group ISIS-K is claiming responsibility. The coordinated attack killed 13 U.S. service members and at least 95 Afghans. The Biden administration now facing a barrage of criticism. The website Politico claims U.S. officials gave the Taliban a list of Americans and Afghan allies in order to grant them access to Kabul airport. President Biden says there have been occasions when the U.S. military contacted the Taliban to allow certain people through security.
The U.S. is now reporting more than 800 deaths from COVID per day. That's the highest level in five months. And we're getting new insight into the crisis that hospitals in several states are facing. Here's ABC's Mona Kassar Abdi. This morning, all 50 states are now reporting a high rate of COVID transmission. With a new forecast warning, we could see more than 100,000 new deaths between now and December 1st. I've seen a lot of people die over the last year and a half, and it is picking up pace. It's never been as bad as it is right now. In Kentucky, hospitalizations just hit an all-time high for the fifth consecutive day. Seeing nearly 5,000 cases and 65 Kentuckians that we lost in just one day's report is um, tough. In North Carolina, the ICUs are treating more patients now than at any other time during the pandemic. In Georgia, some hospitals are turning away ambulances. A similar situation in Florida, where a hospital in West Palm Beach had to transport a police officer to Ohio after running out of ECMO machines, a life support system that provides oxygen by bypassing the lungs. It's a nightmare that I can't wake up from. With the pandemic going on, there are no ECMO uh, machines available in the state of Florida. In Central Florida, they're running out of places to put bodies. This is not being um, exaggerated or blown out of proportion by the media. This is real. With morgues at capacity, some hospitals are now using refrigerated trucks to store the dead. It comes as Florida's ban on mask mandates returns to court, with a judge set to rule on its legality today. Meanwhile, in Illinois, the governor is now reinstating mask requirements. Hospital staff are becoming overwhelmed and overburdened. People are dying who don't have to die. The announcement coming as one school in the Chicago area faces a massive outbreak. At least 50 students and staffers testing positive just two weeks into the school year. Monaco Sarabdi, ABC News, New York. Supreme Court is now allowing evictions to resume across the U.S. The ruling now blocks the Biden administration's ban because of the pandemic. According to Census Bureau data from early August, about three and a half million people said they faced eviction in the next two months. The Supreme Court saying the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention lacked the authority to reimpose the moratorium and needed authorization from Congress. Tropical storm Ida has prompted a hurricane warning for New Orleans and emergency declaration for the state of Louisiana as it pushes across the Caribbean. It's expected to strike Cuba tomorrow. Forecasters say Ida could be near major hurricane strength by the time it reaches the northern Gulf Coast. That is projected to happen sometime Sunday or early Monday. Before that, Ida is expected to bring heavy rainfall to parts of Jamaica, the Cayman Islands and Cuba. A dangerous storm surge is possible for the Gulf Coast depending on the tide by the time the system reaches the U.S. And time now is 437 and it's about 78 degrees out there. Up next, we've got some high school football action plus preview of our first BGC road trip of the season. And taking a look outside with a live cam, we start at 78 and we're expecting a hit to the 90s, but there are chances of rain not only today, but throughout the weekend. We'll be right back. Good morning at 440 right now. We kicked off the 21-21 high school football season last night with a neighborhood rivalry to get big game coverage going. O'Connor versus Brandeis in their first non-district game ever. Check out the stands packed at Ferris Stadium. Sold out last Wednesday to see the new head coach of the Broncos, Charles Game. Bruce, rather, in his first game after leaving Wagner. Brandeis draws first blood. Panthers red zone. Brandeis gets into the end zone for the first score of the game. Broncos would be up 21 to nothing at halftime. It didn't look back. The final from Ferris Stadium. Brandeis wins big 33 to 7 over O'Connor. And here it is, our first broadcast, uh, KSAP Me TV of Texas Sports Productions broadcast of the Madison Mavericks and Clemens Buffaloes. Last night, Clemens returns the opening kick 69 yards to the Madison 7. On the very first play of the season, they cough it up. Miguel Becker causing the fumble for the Mavs. Aaron Bowles catches it, pops loose, and Madison capitalizes. They put together a 97-yard drive that ends with quarterback keeping it. For the four-yard score, 7-0 Madison. Final from Lenhoff Stadium. Madison wins 14-5. Tonight you can catch nine more games, followed by two more Saturday. These streams are free of charge. All you have to do is download the KSAP BGC app and sign up for the BGC Insider page, and you are good to go.
Meanwhile, our first BGC road trip this season will kick off tonight at Davenport High School. Entering their second season of football, the Wolves are still sub varsity and will not play in district until next season during the UIL's 2022-2024 realignment. The starting a program from scratch is pretty cool. Our road trip goes down tonight with Blanco at Davenport, East Central at New Braunfels Canyon, and San Marcos at New Braunfels. Now to submissions baseball. Last night, teams would both teams would get on the board early, but the Rockhounds would end up winning three to two. The series continues tonight at 7:05. Good luck, missions. Time now is 4:42 and about 78 degrees out there. Up next, first look at why health officials say they're seeing an increase in fake vaccination cards, especially among college students. And welcome back. It's about 445. Federal health officials are concerned about an alarming increase in fake vaccination cards, especially among college students. ABC's Ariel Rachef has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, a new warning from federal health officials telling ABC News exclusively they are alarmed about a dramatic rise in reports that fake vaccination cards may be flooding the market. We are seeing it be widespread. And part of that is because it's being done across social media and e-commerce. And authorities say they're concerned these fake cards are popping up at colleges like the University of North Carolina. Students who don't attest to their vaccination, they're required to undergo weekly testing. And so students are submitting these fake vaccination cards in order to get around this weekly testing. UNC responding to ABC News that students who provide false information may face disciplinary action up to suspension. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll tell you how hackers are offering to alter government databases with fake vaccination information. With your GMA First Look, I'm Arielle Reshef, ABC News, New York. Friday morning time check 446. Go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. Good morning, guys. Uh, roads are looking pretty good right now here in town. I was just checking the Chuckstop website. Uh, no crashes reported here at this hour, and there's no stalls, which is good. So the morning commute should be fairly easy at this hour. Loop 410 at Fredericksburg does show. Uh, well, let's jump to US 90 in Montgomery. There was some construction out there a little bit earlier than the week, but looks pretty dark out there. No flashing lights to be on the lookout for. But bringing you to the map right now, it is pretty green on the screen, as you can see. See, but the big problem spot was, of course, I-10 eastbound yesterday. If we can maybe jump to that video once more, show you that deadly crash that led to uh, flames enveloping on those eastbound lanes of I-10. Now, this again was out towards Seguin. It did result in three deaths, and the road there was actually closed for several hours, according to the Seguin Police Department. That crash did happen yesterday on I-10 near the State Highway 123 bypass. Uh, what we do know is that meat products had caused the roads to get slick. Uh, uh, 18 wheeler was carrying those meat products, uh, which did lead to uh, some closures because the meat products got out of the 18 wheeler and it did lead to those slick roads, which of course led to those crashes. And of course, we do know three people did die from that uh, scene right there. And we are working to get more information at this hour, but we can tell you that I was just talking to the uh, friends at trans guy. They did tell us that the roads are now open. So some good news there. And uh, again, right now, no big issues out on our roadways, but we are watching things closely right now and we'll keep you updated guys. Thank you, Steven. Mike, that's beautiful. Behind yeah, you. gorgeous picture. Yesterday was a really nice start to the day, and we had plenty of sunshine, and then the clouds started to uh, form up by late morning and noontime, and that's going to be the situation again today. But a great shot. Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. So, pretty tranquil morning. Airplane coming in there, landing down to the uh, southeast, and uh, going back 12 hours on the radar and satellite loop, there were some of those showers and thunderstorms that a few people saw. Most of us didn't see any rain, unfortunately. However, with the rain chances still in the forecast over the next couple of days, odds are at some point you probably will get one of those showers, and it could be a fairly decent downpour as well. A lot of there's a lot of moisture in the atmosphere, a lot of humidity, and so anything that gets squeezed out is going to be uh, again dumping a a good shower too. So by noon, early afternoon, we will continue to see more of those showers develop and more of them than in the afternoon. And that's going to be the case into about dinner time, early evening. Most of them will be dying down once the sun starts to go down. There could be a couple of leftovers here and there, and then we'll do it all over again tomorrow by late morning, noon. Showers start to develop, showers, and thunderstorms, and more throughout the rest of the afternoon tomorrow. Now, and then, like I said, that's going to continue on into Sunday. Okay, here's the very latest on Ida. And, you know, we, we're saying 
before this ever became an actual tropical system and there was an actually a center of circulation, it was really hard for computer models to grasp onto the path. Well, that was kind of the situation with this because once the center of circulation was found, it was further away from what it was initially thought so the path has changed ever so slightly but it is further to the east than uh, what it originally looked like the past couple of days 45 mile per hour winds tropical storm ida it is going to be moving across Cuba uh, later on today, moving into the Gulf of Mexico, and it looks like it's going to be strengthening fairly quickly. As a matter of fact, latest uh, projections have it making landfall as a very minimal major hurricane, as a Category 3 hurricane, and that's going to be Sunday about midday. It's going to work its way across Louisiana, move up into the Mississippi Valley, the mid Mississippi Valley, and then in toward the uh, Tennessee Valley as a big, big rainmaker. So for us, it is not going to have any direct impact. The indirect impact from it, however, and first of all, here's some of the uh, spaghetti models. And as you can see, everything is pretty much in agreement. The only one that strays from that keeps it way, way off to the east, but nothing has it any further off to the west as far as all of the, the various computer models thrown in together. Back to that storm, the indirect effect it's going to have on it is as we always talk about the right hand side of the storm in relation to its direction of travel is where the heaviest rain is so in this case the heaviest rain obviously is on the east side there's lifting in the atmosphere on the back side of it is sinking atmosphere so the indirect effect this is going to have is it's going to help to heat things up so once it gets closer where rain chances are actually going to start to go down monday and tuesday and between that high and that low the hurricane or the tropical storm by that point, it's going to really help to shoot temperatures up there because we're going to be in the sinking air. So therefore, we're going to be back into the mid and even some upper 90s by uh, probably about Tuesday, Wednesday of next week. 88 degrees at noon. A couple of showers, a couple of thunderstorms are going to continue to develop around here. And then later on this afternoon, high temperature banking on more clouds today to keep temperatures down just a couple of more degrees. 94, some scattered showers and storms. And tomorrow, Sunday, Pretty much a cut and paste, maybe a slightly lesser chance of rain on Sunday. A few leftover showers are possible sea breeze Monday, but yeah, once we're on the back side of that storm, high pressure moves back in. Huh, back to the heat to start off September. At least there was a nice little break there. Yes, yes, and hopefully everybody gets a nice little dousing of rain. Let's get this month over with. It's kind of dragged on in a way, hasn't <laughs> a it? And I just got my electric bill, too. Oh, so uh, yes. It was hotter. Mm -hmm. It definitely it was. was. <laughs> I got mine, too. It was up uh, almost 50 bucks over last month. Yep. Right now, 452, about 77 degrees. And coming up next, we're getting a first look at Kristen Stewart as Princess Diana, plus a scary cult classic hits theaters this weekend. A remake of Candyman hits theaters today, plus first look at Kristen Stewart as Princess Diana. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. I just moved in around the corner. The old candy factory. Get ready for a late August scare. The film Candyman, out today, a remake of the 1992 cult classic. And star Yahya Abdul-Mateen II says the film should further conversations that the country is having about race and privilege. There's a history of, uh, un, of becoming unwanted martyrs and becoming celebrated for reasons that we don't want to be celebrated for. You know what I mean? And so, you know, this movie uh, uh, deals with that. It says, well, what happens when we take our stories back and the power of taking your story and taking your names back? Candyman debuts only in theaters. When I first met him, he was 120 pounds of bad hair. Why don't you just make another short? I will create the next prom king. And another remake, the teen rom-com He's All That flips the script of the late 90s comedy She's All That. Rachel Lee Cook and Matthew Lillard starred in the original and played different characters in this one, and they were a little concerned their young co-stars, including TikTok star Addison Rae, would be buried in their phones all day. They weren't. They, they weren't, which was a miracle. I thought they were just going to be, you know, ticking and attacking and just like this. attacking. They were Digging and dacking, bobbing and weaving. You know. He's All That is on Netflix today. It's our first look at Kristen Stewart as Princess Diana in the trailer for the film Spencer. And we see a lot of Stewart, but we only hear her say two words towards the end. They know everything. They don't. Spencer debuts November 5th. And a breaking bad birthday for Aaron Paul. The Emmy-winning actor is 42 today. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles.
And if you're wondering what Aaron Paul is up to these days, he's been in the last season of Westworld. And I think he's back for the upcoming one as well. Yeah, he's pretty good in Breaking Bad. Oh, he's yeah. awesome in Breaking yeah. Bad. It's a breakthrough role for sure. Yeah. 457, about 77 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, the U.S. military bracing for more potential attacks in Afghanistan after yesterday's deadly bombings outside Kabul's airport. How the Biden administration is responding. Plus, one of the most well-known speeches in American history going virtual thanks to Fortnite. Details coming up in Tech Bytes. And are you afraid of bugs? Uh, yes, it was a terrifying scene in Washington state where wildlife officials found and destroyed a murder hornet nest. We're gonna have the details ahead on GMSA at six. And right now, Stephen is here keeping an eye on things. There's 90 at 36th Street. There is 37 at I-10 and 37 at Houston. Another look at the roads coming up right here on GMSA. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. President Biden promising revenge on a terrorist group after at least 13 U.S. service members and at least 60 Afghans were killed in attacks outside the airport yesterday in Kabul. I'm ABC's Faith Abube in Washington. Details coming up. And outside with live cam, we had a few showers and storms in the area yesterday. Mike says that trend will continue as we go into the next couple of days. His forecast still to come. Good morning, everybody. We made it to Friday. It's August 27th. Good morning. Happy Friday. I hope you got some rain yesterday. And if not, I hope you got some cloud cover. I did. I did, too. And I had one of those downpours and it's almost like the grass. I could literally hear up Mike saying, ah. <laughs> That's a good way to put it, yeah, because hopefully all of our lawns and trees and flowers and everything else are just going to be getting a nice drink of water at some point over the next couple of days with these uh, rain chances around here. Mine was no rain, uh, but really hot. And out at the airport, we did hit 97 degrees, didn't get any rain out there at the airport, so just kind of missed it. And there's still plenty of sunshine, obviously, to warm things up. We're at 77 right now, and the humidity's at 72, or dew points at 72, I should say. Uh, so the Humidity is, yeah, it's there. It's not a steam bath this morning. We're going to make it up to 94 today. I'm banking on a few more clouds to stick around here and a slightly better chance for some rain, about a 40% chance for a shower thunderstorm popping up later on today. But unfortunately, not everybody, once again, will see rain. The aquifer dropped down three tenths of a foot yesterday and allergens. Mold is on the low side. So, yeah, it's another warm morning. Temperatures remain on the above normal side right now. Mid and some upper 70s, 79 still at Del Rio. Carrizo Springs 73 and uh, just to the west in Hondo and Uvalde 76 74 respectively and throughout the rest of today well warm and humid this morning nothing on radar right now but even by about noon we will start to see a couple of uh, showers popping up here and there thunderstorm or two more of those later on this afternoon most of them are going to be dying down of course once the sun sets but a couple of leftovers even into tonight and the weekend We'll still have more scattered storms around the area. Temperatures will stay uh, today and the weekend in the mid 90s. Then we go into next week and we're going to be heating back up. Thanks partly to indirectly to tropical storm or what will become Hurricane Ida. Yeah, it's going to have a little bit of an impact on that to heat up next week. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority Stephen Cavazos and you got the latest on I-10 east of town, right? And, yeah, and the good news is, Mike, it is now uh, open. It was closed for several hours, over 12 hours, and uh, we do want to take a look at our roads in town right now. And they're looking pretty good so far as we're getting the morning started here. I-35 at Evans Road uh, does show a few vehicles out on the road this morning. I-10 at Frio, a little quiet there and a little dark from that shot at Transguide. Uh, but let's go ahead and bring you to the map right now, and it has been pretty green all morning long so far, and we're hoping that, of course, it does stay that way. We've been keeping our eyes on the road, and as always, you should too. Uh, but yeah, that road out towards I-10 has uh, the highway off I-10 eastbound has officially opened. Again, it was closed for several hours, but drivers shouldn't expect any delays this morning, uh, especially if they're going to be coming to the downtown San Antonio area there from I-10. Once again, 29 minutes uh, pretty green from Seguin right now, and if you're going to be traveling from Pleasanton on 37. It is 28 minutes, 17 minutes coming in from Lytle and 35, and we are looking at 18 minutes coming on coming in from Highway 90. One last look at Transguide 281 at Hildebrandt. It is pretty quiet this morning, but of course, uh, watch the road closely, and we will too, and we'll have those updates here on GMSA. Mark Stephanie. Stephen, thank you very much. You're looking live right now at Kabul International Airport, where it is 2.34 in the afternoon. Evacuations resumed earlier today. The bombings outside the airport yesterday are being called the deadliest attacks on U.S. forces in Afghanistan in a decade. 
At least 13 U.S. service members were killed and more than 18 were wounded. ABC's Beta Bube has the latest this morning. This morning, the U.S. military is bracing for more potential attacks in Afghanistan after Thursday's deadly bombings outside Kabul's airport. The military group ISIS-K, a sworn enemy of the Taliban, now claiming responsibility. The coordinated attack killing 13 U.S. troops and at least 95 Afghans. We will not forget. We will hunt you down and make you pay. This morning, the Biden administration is facing an avalanche of criticism, firing back at Republicans who are demanding Biden resign. This is a day where U.S. service members lost their lives at the hands of terrorists. Uh, it's not a day for politics. The president is responding to a report from the website Politico, which claims U.S. officials gave the Taliban a list of Americans and Afghan allies in order to grant them access to Kabul's airport. But I can't tell you with any certitude that there's actually been a list of names. I know there may have been, but I know of no circumstances. Up to 1,000 Americans remain in Afghanistan. And 23 students from the San Diego area were stuck in Afghanistan, but we're told most of them will be home soon, but some remain in Afghanistan. In Washington, Faith Abube, ABC News. Well, back here at home, it's 506. Uh, we have a new segment called Ask Your Traffic Authority. One mother questioning whether it's a school zone or a danger zone. The intersection of Jackson Keller and Montview is located just outside Lee High School over on the city's northeast side, but some worry traffic is getting out of hand there. Stephen Cavazos is live in the traffic lab, and Stephen, what are some of the concerns that you've heard? Yeah, Mark Stephanie, no traffic direction, a lack of patrol, and a disregard to the school zone. One parent even tells me it's every man, woman, and student for themselves, and she's worried what could happen next. Now, we did speak with Hillary Ross, who says her daughter just started attending the International School of the Americas located within Lee High School. But during that first week of drop-off, Ross spotted a number of traffic issues, including drivers making wrong turns, students almost being hit by passing cars, even drivers attempting to direct traffic. Ross does tell me she spoke to other parents who share that same frustration. Better get here early and um, don't get hit. I did reach out to the San Antonio Police Department. While there have been some crashes reported in that area, thankfully no reports of people being hit or there have been no reports that is of people being hit by vehicles. And coming up uh, later this morning on GMSA at 6, how Northeast ISD has responded to those concerns. We'll have that story again coming up on GMSA at 6. Live in the Traffic Lab, your Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, KSAT 12 News. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. 507, 77 degrees. And we're going to tell you about an upgrade to Snapchat's popular camera feature. Next, how some local students are taking the stage to highlight the need for mental health help for adolescents. Taking a look outside, live can, nice shot there. No rain in that shot. However, if you didn't get rain yesterday, maybe today, maybe tomorrow, the chances continue. We'll be right back. Welcome back. 511 students from CAST schools are taking to the stage to bring mental health, self-identity, and challenging adolescents to the face the forefront. Students will perform a stage adaption of the book Tafoya Toro, Three Years of Fear, written by San Antonio native Lorenzo Gomez III. The book details the author's middle school years in one of the city's most crime-riddled neighborhoods and includes letters the author wrote to his younger self. Gomez partnered with CAST schools to transform Form the book into a play and it will now be performed for incoming freshmen from cast med cast lead cast tech cast stem and advanced learning academy when you write a book you never know how it's going to be received and to watch these students sort of internalize the stories to put themselves in the stories and actually feel safe enough to tell their version has just been the most rewarding experience of them all Bigger audiences in San Antonio could soon see the play as well. Cast aims to complete and co-publish the play and get a designation for it to be performed at the Texas UIL One Act Theater competitions. And time now is 512 and about 77 degrees out there. Still ahead, why many of us may have to pay more for our favorite electronics. And uh, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s I Have a Dream speech is making its way onto one of the most popular online video games. Trilogy for COPD. Birds flying high, you know how I feel. Breeze drifting on by, you know how I feel. 
It's a new dawn. If you've been taking COPD sitting day. down, it's time to make a stand. Start a new day and with I'm Trilogy. No one's daily COPD medicine has the power to treat COPD in as many ways as Trilogy. With three medicines in one inhaler, Trilogy helps people breathe easier and improves lung function. It also helps prevent future flare-ups. Trilogy won't replace a rescue inhaler for sudden breathing problems. Tell your doctor if you have a heart condition or high blood pressure before taking it. Do not take Trilogy more than prescribed. Trilogy may increase your risk of thrush, pneumonia, and osteoporosis. Call your doctor if worsened breathing, chest pain, mouth or tongue swelling, problems you're vision changes or eye pain occur. Take a stand and start a new day with Trilogy. Ask your doctor about Once Daily Trilogy and save at Trilogy.com. 515 Snapchat's upgraded camera feature can now identify real world objects. ABC's Mona Kassar Abdi has details in Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, a camera upgrade for Snapchat. The app scan feature can now identify real-world objects such as clothes and even dog breeds. The move brings it in line with visual search abilities of the lens features on Pinterest and Google Pixel phones. The world's largest chip maker, Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing, may be about to raise prices as much as 20% according to reports. That means higher prices for electronics, including cell phones and cars with high-tech systems. Fortnite is launching a new experience center around Martin Luther King Jr.'s I Have a Dream speech. The event called March Through Time lets gamers virtually attend the iconic 1963 speech, hold up signs and applaud, but the idea of using Dr. King in a video game is sparking some backlash. I can say it's very different than the Nintendo 64 I used to play. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. 516. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavasso. Things looked quiet so far, at least this morning. Yeah, TGIF, right? Uh, things have been looking good so far. Mark and Steph, 1604 at Bandera, 37 at Houston Street. Not many people out on the roads with us this morning, but that's okay. Let's go ahead and take a look and see how things are shaping up. Right now, this shot at 35 at Evans shows a little bit of a busier commute than some of those other shots we've been showing you here on the rotator. I-10 at Frio, just again, a few folks out there getting their morning started, but thankfully, no issues that are going to cause any delays or slowdowns at this time. It's been like this so far all morning long as we're inching closer to 6 a.m. We hope that it does stay that way. And as we're inching closer to the weekend, we do want to uh, keep have you keep in mind some construction that's happening out towards I-35, so a bridge demolition. We told you about this yesterday. Uh, it does lead to that full closure of the northbound main lanes over at Watson Lane over to Conrad's Lane. And it started yesterday evening, Thursday, August 26, but it should be wrapping up later tonight. It's from 9 in the evening to 5 in the morning. So again, if you're an early morning or overnight commuter, be on the look out for that and find that alternative route. But right now things are looking pretty good in town 281 at San Pedro. Again, people getting their morning started early with us. Maybe a good time to go grab that cup of coffee. I know I definitely need one. <laughs> <laughs> I do too. Donuts. Well, every day though. Donuts. I still need to bring you guys donuts. <laughs> yeah. One that day. Sounds like a plan. A, a good Maybe Friday plan. plan. Some Friday. I'll make the donuts. Look at Mike. His, <laughs> his, his mind is wandering. Anyway. <laughs> Kind of hungry right now. Yeah. Great view of the situation yesterday. This is out near Bernie, and there was that rain shaft, and it was coming down pretty good in places. A lot of rain very quickly, but it was very confined, and that's going to be the situation again today, where most of again most of this picture there is no rain, and that's going to be the case today. Most folks won't see rain, but if you do, again a couple of decent downpours. The odds, since we do have now today, tomorrow, and Sunday with okay rain chances. So the odds are, are good that at some point each of us will see some rain. Uh, fairly tranquil picture out there by the airport. And again, just going back to yesterday, there were those few showers and thunderstorms popped up some fairly decent cells. Things have settled down, did settle down once the, the sun went down and where you didn't get rain and it was still really, really hot. I mean, we did hit 97 degrees out there at the airport yesterday. Now today I'm banking on more clouds, so that will keep temperatures down somewhat. And this model actually actually has uh, some upper 80s just uh, up there in the northern portion of Bear County up around Timberwood Park. But of course, we will have somewhat of a heat index to deal with. So add about four or five degrees to that. So we are going to be up into the hundreds, but not as widespread of hundreds because obviously we have some lower temperatures. All right, there is now what is Tropical Storm Ida in the uh, Caribbean, just about to move uh, across the western end of Cuba. And it's going to be going off into the, uh, the Gulf of Mexico. Another system out there just to the east of Bermuda.
Bermuda that the Hurricane Center is watching is pretty good chance of development and then another one off to the east. So obviously it's getting active as we approach because of uh, second week of September is the peak of the uh, tropical season in the Atlantic Basin. And as far as computer models today, now again, this is that broad brush that paints it in so not everybody's going to be seeing rain, but a decent chance of rain most everywhere. Same thing tomorrow. Same thing on Sunday, first part of the day on Sunday. Then rain chances are actually as the uh, what will become a hurricane as it gets closer, they're going to be dropping down because we're going to be on the sinking side of this. And again, this computer model, like every other computer model, does have this making land right around New Orleans and it's going to be on Sunday and then working its way up to the north. But as it does again, we stay on the dry side of this thing, so rain chances come in here, then the storm approaches, then the rain chances pretty much go out of the picture. And also being on the sinking side of that with that sinking air, that means things are going to be heating up once we get into Monday and then especially Tuesday, Wednesday of next week. 88 degrees today. A couple of storms are already going to start to pop up by late this morning and noon, early afternoon, and then more of them throughout the afternoon. 94 high temperature. A couple of those scattered showers and thunderstorms, some decent downpours can be expected. Same thing tomorrow, pretty much same thing on Sunday, but as the storm gets closer, rain chances will continue to go down here, and then we do start to heat up going into the middle of next week. So we're looking at some mid and upper 90s by next week. And once again, the latest numbers on right now, Tropical Storm Ida will become a hurricane once it uh, moves into the Gulf of Mexico. And then just as it's making landfall, latest numbers have it becoming a very minimal, but a category three, which is considered a, a major hurricane as it makes land in New Orleans. Yeah, I know one of the things yesterday we were looking on on GMSA at nine was how unbelievably warm the Gulf is right now. And that will add fuel to the fire because there hadn't been a lot of activity out mm -hmm. there. So it's yeah. not like the cooler water has been churned up, right? So you got all that bath water sitting right there on top that this thing's going to be feeding off of. So. OK, well, watch out. Great. Thank you, Mike. Keep us posted. Right now, 521. It's about 77 degrees at San Antonio International Airport. And still ahead in your morning spotlight, Come From Away is filmed for streaming. And The Beatles' final and most documented album is getting new life. But first, we have all your lottery numbers. Pick three. 449, Fireball 3. Daily 4, 9024, Fireball 2. Cash 5, 1, 3, 18, 22, 30. And your Texas 2 step, 3, 4, 12, 32, bonus ball 18. Five twenty-five. There is so much music in today's entertainment report. You could almost sing along. CNN's David Daniel hits the high notes in today's Hollywood Minute. September 11th, 2001. Over 200 planes getting diverted. With thousands of passengers arriving at any minute, the town is asking for help with, well, anything you can do. Here's your first look at Come From Away, filmed on stage for home viewing. The much-loved Tony-winning Broadway musical about travelers forced to land in the small town of Gander, Newfoundland on 9-11 arrives on Apple TV Plus on September 10th one day before the 20th anniversary of the attacks. If I won the lotto tomorrow, well, I know I wouldn't bother going on no spin is free. I pick a business school and pay the entrance fee. Corey Hawkins from In the Heights is taking on another movie musical. According to multiple reports, the actor is joining the film adaptation of the Broadway musical The Color Purple, due in theaters in December of 2023. <laughs> The Beatles' final and most documented album is getting new life. Special edition releases of Let It Be are set to include previously unreleased outtakes, studio jams, rehearsals, and other extra features. They're due out October 15th. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. 526 on your Friday, 77 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, the chaos outside Kabul's airport has become a catastrophe, and U.S. officials say more attacks are expected. We take a look at what happens next. Plus, thousands of flavored e-cigarette products can no longer be sold. We'll tell you about the latest move by the Food and Drug Administration to protect younger Americans. Plus, Peloton is offering yet another price cut on its famous exercise bikes. Making headlines this morning after deadly attacks claimed the lives of multiple U.S. service members, evacuations have resumed in Kabul, Afghanistan. 
two men shot and taken to Bamsi in critical condition here at the Bronig RV Lake Resort. Details about this incident coming up next. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, we're at 77 degrees. And if you didn't get rain yesterday, not to worry. You might have a chance today or tomorrow. A decent chance at that. Good morning, everybody. It's Friday. It is August 27th. Happy Friday. Glad you're with us today and glad we made it to the end of the week. Such good news. Let's get uh, an update on that. You have lots to talk about this morning, Mike. Yes, indeed. First of all, we'll talk about rain chances. Some folks got some decent rain yesterday and then for the rest of us, it was just right there. It didn't come into our backyard, but we have more Pretty good rain chances today and through the weekend. We are starting off pretty tranquil out there by the airport. Temperature right now is at 77 degrees. The average normal low is 74, so we're still on the warm side of things. There's still a fair amount of humidity out there, and uh, we do have a low amount of mold right now, although with some of the rain in the forecast, mold may start to go up. Of course, today's updated count is going to be coming out uh, between about 7, 7, 30, 88 degrees today at noon, 94 for high temperature. And already by noon, like yesterday, we'll start to see one or two of those shower storms starting to develop and then more of them later on. About a 30, 40 percent chance for rain today, which means, yes, of course, most of us won't see rain. But again, if you do, you get a fairly a decent downpour. Some of those storms may linger into the evening hours and Boy, this is fun to have this forecast up there. This graphic football forecast, a stray storm again here or there. It's probably not going to have any impact on the game you're going to. It's going to be right around 90 at kickoff and then by halftime about the mid 80s. Sunset is just after 8 o'clock, so it is going to be kind of a sultry evening for football. Weekend forecast is coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority Stephen Cavazos, what's the latest? Hey, good morning, Mike. Happy Friday to everybody. You know, I-35 at Evans Road off to a smooth start here from these shots at Transguide. Thanks Hopefully no issues right now that are going to be causing those delays. Let's go ahead and take a look and see what's happening out there right now. Uh, just a few vehicles getting on the roadway there at 35 southbound at Maine. Uh, maybe grabbing that cup of coffee that we talked about a little bit earlier. Again, it's not a pretty good time to head out the door, I think. Uh, bringing you to the attention here of the map right now. Again, no issues to report. Been checking those text stop pages, the fire pages. No crashes on our radar just yet, but of course, we're always watching things very closely. And yeah, as I mentioned, it's a good time to grab that cup of coffee and maybe a good time to also fuel up really quick here. Triple A gas prices, Bear County average gas price 261. Around the state, we're looking at 279 and the country 314. So some news for you before you head to the pump. Inbound times are also looking really good right now. And one last look here at Transguide. Just a few folks out there, but we're watching things closely. And as always, keep your eyes on the road as well. Mark Stephanie. Even new this morning, San Antonio police say two men were shot at an RV park off I-37 south overnight. Jonathan Cotto joins us live from that scene near Bronig Lake. And Jonathan, what can you tell us? Well, Stephanie, the scene is clear here at the Bronick Lake RV Resort, but it was a busy one for San Antonio police. Those two men who were shot were taken to Bamsi in critical condition, but a sergeant just moments ago updated their status. They are expected to be okay. But here's a look at this scene just a few hours ago. Police responding to the 13,000 block of Dunlop Road that's here in Elmendorf at the Bronick RV Resort. Investigators on scene tell us a man came out from his trailer after hearing a pickup truck pull up, making a lot of noise. They say that man, believed to be in his 30s, told the four men in the pickup truck to keep it down. One of those men got down from the truck and punched him in the face, knocking him to the ground. Now, investigators say that man went back into the trailer, got his gun, and shot one of the four men, grazing him on the ear and shooting him on the leg. They say the other three males went on to beat the man and take his gun. They tell us that man could have been shot in the face and near his lower back, but from the amount of blood, it was hard to tell on scene. They add there was enough shell casings on the ground to believe so. Now, Mark, Stephanie, it's important to mention those three other men were taken into custody, but of course, this case continues to be under investigation. We'll keep you updated as more information is made available. For GMSA, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. It took Bear County Sheriff's deputies and a taser to stop a man who they say fired a gun at a family in a passing car. A man in that car was hit by the gunfire, which seems to have been fired at random. This all happened overnight on the southeast side of town. Katrina Weber is live downtown with that story. And Katrina, how bad were his wounds? 
Well, according to investigators, it was nothing life-threatening. That man was hit twice in his shoulder. But they do have a lot of questions, mainly for the suspect in this case, who they did catch. Let me give you a look at the video. Uh, they found the victim a little bit after 1 o'clock this morning in the parking lot of an HEB in the 4100 block of South New Braunfels. That man was in his truck with his family, his wife and child, driving in the area on a street called Monticello Court. He says when someone came up and shot him for no apparent reason, someone he didn't know. Well, deputies and police were all out in the area. Deputies managed to uh, catch up with the guy who they saw running down the street in the area. They caught him in the backyard of the house after he jumped a fence. They say they had to use their taser on him and did take him into custody. That man who's in his 40s now facing several charges. And again, uh, investigators are trying to figure out why he targeted the man who was in his truck with his family, because according to that victim, he didn't know this person. And it appears that this shooting was done at random. Reporting live downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. This morning after two deadly attacks in Kabul, Afghanistan, the evacuation min mission continues. Now U.S. officials say more attacks are expected. CNN's Brick Hotway has a look at what happens from there. <laughs> Devastation in Kabul. Two deadly attacks outside the gates of the airport. Dozens of Afghans were killed along with multiple U.S. service members. Their legacy will be the thousands of Afghans, little girls and little boys who are alive today. Massachusetts Representative Seth Moulton saw the evacuation efforts firsthand during his widely criticized trip to Kabul this week. It was, it was actually, it was absolutely extraordinary. And the evacuations continue, a desperate race against time. ISIS-K has claimed responsibility for the attacks and the Department of Defense says more attacks are imminent. That could mean everything from rocket attacks to suicide bombings, either by car bomb or vest, like what happened Thursday. U.S. officials say they're hunting down the attackers at the same time they're trying to prevent more attacks, even turning to the Taliban for help and sharing intelligence. We cut down the information we give the Taliban. They don't get the full range of information we have, but we give them enough to act in time and space to try to prevent these attacks. And we believe that some attacks have been thwarted by them. But there's no plan right now for additional U.S. troops. And the August 31st deadline for troops to leave remains. I'm Britt Conway reporting. The U.S. Department of Education says it will cancel more than $1 billion in student loan debt for some students who were defrauded. President Joe Biden has approved the student loan cancellations for students who attended the now defunct for-profit ITT Technical Institute. Department of Education making the cancellation automatic for borrowers who qualify starting in September brings the total amount of loan discharges approved under President Biden to nearly $10 billion. The majority of that debt is held by permanently disabled borrowers who had long been eligible for loan forgiveness but who have not applied. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention says it's seeing an alarming amount of prescriptions for a drug used to fight parasites in animals. The health agency says that false claims that the drug ivermectin can be used to treat COVID-19, driving up the prescription numbers. It's also prompting a huge increase in calls to poison control centers and visits to understaffed emergency rooms. The Food and Drug Administration is cautioning people against using the drug to treat COVID-19. Overdoses can cause stomach problems, nerve damage, Damage, seizures, disorientation, coma, and even death. Here at home, parents in rural communities are watching the rising COVID cases in school districts. Some are frustrated over the lack of mask enforcement. Mask up. Mask up or, I mean, we're going to have a lot of fatalities. There is already. So um, mask up or, you know, get ready for a funeral. So far, Uvalde CISD and Canipa ISD show the highest number of cases. Superintendent, some of these districts say they've tried to educate parents, encourage face mask wearing, and have hosted vaccination clinics. We've reached out on numerous occasions prior to school and since school started encouraging uh, our parents to have their children cover up, uh, likewise with our staff. However, we're playing in a political ball game with the governor's mandates. 
That's Superintendent Richard Grill says last year when face masks were required and when exposures were mitigated differently, there were only 13 COVID cases all year long. This year so far, there are already 20. He says he'll continue to educate parents in the hopes they can help keep COVID cases low. And time now is 539. It's about 77 degrees out there. So had the FDA cracking down on flavored e-cigarettes. How new regulations will affect what kinds of products younger people might be able to buy. And children continue to take up space in hospitals across the country, but it's not only because of COVID. And outside with live cam, a shower or two throughout the weekend. Is that possible? Mike is saying, yeah, it could be. We'll talk more about that. And he is tracking Ida right here on GMSA. The continuing surge of COVID-19 is colliding with an unseasonable epidemic of RSV. And it's landing children in hospitals across the country. Erica Hernandez has a story. It's a collision of viruses overwhelming some pediatric hospitals across the country. First, those battling COVID-19. We're seeing many more children admitted who are very sick from this than we've seen at any point prior in the, in the pandemic. On top of that, some hospitals reporting children also being infected with a second virus at the same time usually a respiratory sickness. The CDC warned doctors last June of a growing number of RSV cases across the South. CDC data show a continuing upsurge of RSV now across the rest of the country. Even though we have, uh, you know, the prospect of the winter coming with increased respiratory diseases, and we saw a lot of spread of coronavirus last winter, there's a big difference between last winter and the upcoming winter, which is that we have millions and millions of people in our country who are now vaccinated. And the Delta variant continues to cause COVID-19 cases to climb. Overall, the latest numbers show more than 100,000 people hospitalized for COVID-19, the U.S. averaging more than 1,100 COVID-19 deaths each day, a 39% increase over last week's seven-day average. Health experts continue to say vaccines are the best protection and help protect those who are too young to get vaccinated. I have seen a, a lot of people change their minds and change their attitudes towards COVID-19 vaccination um, with how many young people are, are going into our hospital systems right now. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. And time now is 544 and it's about 77 degrees out there. Up next, a big change for e-cigarette companies. FDA cracking down now on products aimed at younger Americans. In your morning consumer headlines, about 52,000 pounds of chicken salad and dip products are being recalled due to possible plastic contamination. The Department of Agriculture's Food Safety and Inspection Service says the ready-to-eat various chicken salads and dip items were made on August 10th by the Willow Tree Poultry Farm in Massachusetts. Now, so far, there hasn't been any confirmed reports of adverse reactions. Consumers are asked to contact their health care providers if there are any injury or concerns. The FDA is blocking the sale of 55 5,000 flavored e-cigarette products for the first time since requiring the products to apply for review. Food and Drug Administration is ordering the products be taken off the market, saying they pose a public health threat to American young people. JD Nova Group LLC, Great American Vapes and Vapor Salon are accused of making non-tobacco flavored electronic nicotine delivery systems. The products have kid-friendly flavors like apple crumb, Dr. Cola, and cinnamon toast crunch and will no longer be allowed on the market. If any of these flavored vaping products are found, companies and retailers must remove them or risk enforcement. The FDA is reviewing applications for more than 500 companies covering more than 6 million tobacco products. Trendy fitness company, company Peloton is slashing prices on its exercise bikes again. It comes as the company faces fiercer competition from rivals producing cheaper products and as people return to gyms. It's the second time in a year the company has cut the price of its original at-home bike. The core bike will be reduced by roughly 20%, now costing $1,495. Peloton has also reduced its monthly financing rates. Shares of the company are down about 20% this year.
If you are wrapping up your workout right now, wondering how traffic is looking, wonder no more. Here's Stephen Cavazos. Yeah, do an extra mile for me because I've not been on the treadmill or on a run in a long time. So Bambi legs over here. <laughs> uh, I-10 at Frio. <laughs> yes, yes, they used to call me Bambi in soccer. Oh. Uh, yes, uh, I-10 at Frio, uh, 35 at Southbound. Things looking good, making Mike chuckle over here, which is always nice to hear on a Friday. <laughs> Let's go ahead and take a look at Transguide oh, right now as we're getting the morning going south. Uh, 90 westbound at Zazamoto shows a few vehicle. Uh, different shot here at I-10 at Pro right now. Thankfully, no issues out on the roadway, so uh, you can grab that cup of coffee, head to the gas station because things are pretty green on the screen right now. And as we look ahead to the weekend, as many of us are right now, let's go ahead and bring you over here to State Highway 123 out towards the game, rather, rather the Guadalupe County line. Uh, there is going to be some construction happening. There are road closures, we should say road repairs, rather full closure in both directions. We talked about this a little bit earlier in the week, three miles north of FM 1681 to Zion Hill Road. It's actually current, but should be wrapping up later this morning, but it is a long construction roadway repairs that are taking place from eight in the morning to seven in the evening. So just be prepared for that uh, if you're heading in that direction later today. But right now these roads are looking good so far and we're going to be watching things closely and uh, thankfully no issues right now. So TGIF. Good news. TGIF. Yes, Thank you, Stephen. Enough. Hey, Mike, you're very good at what you do, but behind you something <laughs> that is truly <laughs> outstanding in their field. But I'm bumped. That's just a cool looking picture. I mean, yeah. I just love that. And her name is Charlotte. Charlotte. <laughs> and what a name for a cow. I know. Mm -hmm. Charlotte looks like she's looking at you. <laughs> right now. Charlotte, no. <laughs> like, all right, you said it was going to rain. Well, <laughs> it did in some places. See. Yes, it did in some places, Charlotte. Anyway, yeah, that's a great picture. Thank you very much. And uh, yeah, some folks did get rain yesterday. The majority of folks did not. Same situation today and next couple of days. But when you add it all up, the odds are in favor that uh, at some point in the next few days, each of us should get uh, some rain. All right, humidity is fairly high this morning. It will be dropping down somewhat by later on this afternoon. But again, I think we're still going to keep enough humidity around to well, make it a little more uncomfortable in the afternoon. But then again, with that extra moisture around, that's going to help to feed some of those heavier downpours. So if you do get some of those showers and thunderstorms to pop up later on this afternoon, could have a couple of decent downpours. Justin Horn yesterday at one point said, yeah, the storm moved through very quickly, picked up a quick three tenths of an inch of rain, which is some pretty good lawn watering. Same thing tomorrow where the humidity dew point levels will be staying up somewhat. And again, that's going to be feeding some of those showers and storms. OK, down here in the Caribbean. Tropical storm Ida yesterday. It wasn't even a tropical depression at this time, but it did form up. And one thing, and this goes back to um, why we were so cautious about showing uh, projected paths of the storm before an actual center of circulation was formed up. The uh, the official tracks have changed ever so slightly a little further to the east because the center of circulation was actually formed up the speculation was it was further down to the southwest. That's why a lot of those uh, computer models had this thing moving a little further to the west. So anyway, the actual center of circulation right now has been detected 45 mile per hour winds with that tropical storm. It's going to work its way across Cuba and then into the Gulf of Mexico. And this is like bathwater out here. So that's what these storms feed off of. And that's why it is going to become a hurricane by tomorrow afternoon. And then it's going to gain strength fairly quickly, becoming category two hurricane. And right as it makes land, Right about Sunday midday, it is forecast right now to barely reach category three hurricane strength. So in the in the record books, it will go down as a minimal, though, major hurricane, which three and above are considered major hurricanes and is going to go right into New Orleans and then curve around up to the uh, north and to the northwest. So it's going to be a big rain producer in and around the mid south and then up into the uh, Tennessee Valley for us, though. It's not as of right now going to have any any impact on our weather at all. As a matter of fact, all of the computer models are still keeping this well off to the east of us. And the reason for it is, well, the high pressure is would have a tendency to shove it to the east, but that one's going to be weakening and this other area of high pressure is going to start to work its way on in here. So these are a couple of factors that are working in our favor to not get a direct hit from this, but the indirect effects for of it will be the fact that this is the rainy side of the storm. This is the sinking side of the storm, which means the air sinks, it compresses, it heats up. So between those two features, temperatures are going to start to go up once we get into Monday and then going into the middle part of next week. Till then, though, we do have some rain chances. So.
88 degrees today at noon. Couple of showers, couple of thunderstorms around. They'll start to develop by noon and then more of them later on today with 94 for a high temperature. Tomorrow, same situation. Sunday, just about the same situation. But as that storm gets closer, that's going to tend to help to cut off the rain a little bit, if you will, around here. And then temperatures heat up by the middle part of next week. Glad we had the chances of rain, though. Yeah, yeah, could, could use some because it has been a while, but it looks like September's starting off kind of hot. Ah, okay. The look on your face says it all. Kind of <laughs> like you just ate something sour. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yes. Back yeah. to the upper 90s by September. Well, back to like life. <laughs> back to reality. 554, 77 degrees. Look at your winning lotto numbers. We have pick 3, 449, four, Fireball 3, Daily 4, 9024, four, Fireball 2. Cash 5, 1318, 2230, Texas 2 step, 3, 4, 12, 32, with a bonus ball of 18. Good morning. Coming up on GMA, we'll have the latest on the crisis in Afghanistan. The U.S. is bracing for another act of terror after the deadliest attack on U.S. forces there in more than a decade. It left 13 U.S. service members dead and dozens of Afghans also dead. The president vowing to retaliate. We're going to have more on the critical situation this morning. And I will be headed to the Gulf Coast because we will have a hurricane by Sunday into Monday. That and so much more right here on GMA. And ahead in the next hour of Good Morning San Antonio, the latest on a new wildfire burning in Northern California. And the son of one of our executive producers here at KSAT hears his mom and dad's voices for the very first time. You're going to see it happen. We have that touching story coming up right here on GMSA. Transgood right now looks like a whole bunch of folks just left all at once. There's I-10 at Frio. Stephen Cavazos gets you up today as we get your Friday morning commute rolling. We'll be right back. San Antonio police busy investigating a early morning shooting that's landed two men in the hospital. Details about this incident coming up next. 1,500, that's how many murder hornets were inside a massive nest found in Washington state. We'll have details. Taking a look outside with live cam, we're at 77 degrees. Hey, it's Friday and hey, we're expecting rain. Great news. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning, TGIF. It is Friday, August 27th. Yay, it's Friday. Go ahead and treat yourself to coffee, donuts, tacos, whatever you want. It's Friday. <laughs> That's Calories right. don't okay. count today. <laughs> they don't count today. All right, we're going to talk to uh, Stephen about traffic in just one moment, but first, here's Mike with more. Yes, sir. I like what she's saying. I'm going to go back to that. She's got a great game plan, and Steph, we trust. Yes. All right. Uh, all those in favor of Mark running, aye. To the get coffee. The, the eyes don't have it. <laughs> <laughs> really, you two? Come on, folks. Well, hey, uh, nice was, start this morning. Sorry. It is tranquil out there. We do have warm temperatures. We're about, uh, say, three, four degrees above normal, and we do have some humidity to deal with as well. Here's what's going back in time as far as the showers and thunderstorms that did pop up, and now we are starting to see a few more developing here along the coast. So these will want to work their way inland as well, and we've got a, another decent chance for some rain around here today. Mold is on the low side. The updated count is going to be coming out in about an hour, hour and a half or so. And temperatures today, we will stay right about where we are right now. 70s, mid 70s, couple of degrees above normal. And then by noon is when we'll start to see some of those showers and thunderstorms begin to uh, develop and move in there from the coast. And then later on this afternoon, more of those showers and thunderstorms are going to be popping up around here and we'll hit a high temperature of 94. So I'm banking on more clouds to stick around because yesterday, yeah, despite the fact that some folks got some decent rain, we still hit 97 at the airport, but we should stay down a few more degrees and that's going to be the case in through the weekend. So more on that forecast, the latest on Tropical Storm Ida over there in the Caribbean coming up. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, what is going on on the highways and byways, sir? Good morning, Mike. Uh, we do have some flashing lights here. 
here of I-10 at Proband. As you can see from the shot at Transguide, let's go ahead and take a closer look, find out what's going on right there. Uh, as you can see, we do have a few more folks out on the roadways, but uh, what appears that's happening out there is a stalled vehicle, and that's according to the TxDOT website that we just checked right now. But as you can see, yeah, those flashing lights out there move over and slow down for those TxDOT hero trucks working to assist that driver or, or perhaps first responder. But right now, that's still reported off I-10 eastbound at Proband. Mark mentioned this before the break. Uh, it's almost like everybody came out at once and decided that they were going to go ahead and get their morning started early because we're seeing more of those stalls now just popping up at the same time. Loop 410 northbound at Marbach Road, a stall reported there, and we do have another stall right not too far from where uh, we saw the other one off I-35 northbound at McCullough, so it is shaping up to be a morning of stalls, so check those vehicles before you hit the roadways, and if you need to travel to San Antonio in the next few moments, we have these inbound times for you. Pretty green though right now, 24 minutes coming in from I-10 and Bernie. We have 25 coming in from 281 and Bull Verde, and 26 on 35 from New Braunfels. So green is a dominant color right now, but just take it easy out on the roadways and we'll be watching things closely. Mark Stuff. Thanks, Stephen. New this morning, law enforcement agencies investigating an early morning shooting at an RV park in Elmendorf that sent two men to the hospital. Jonathan Cotto is following this story and joins us live. And Jonathan, what do investigators say led up to the shooting? Good morning, Mark and Stephanie. Well, I'm located at the Bronig Lake RV Resort, where police tell us a man stepped out of his trailer to confront three other men who were apparently making loud noise. But here's a look at what that scene looked like just a few hours ago. Heavy police presence here at the Bronig RV Resort Park. Police responding to reports of a shooting at around 2.13 this morning on the 13,000 block of Donup Road. That's at the Bronig RV Resort. Investigators on scene tell us a man came out from his trailer after hearing a pickup truck pull up making a lot of noise. They say that man, believed to be in his 30s, told the four men in the pickup truck to keep it down. One of those men got down from the truck and punched him in the face, knocking him to the ground. Now, investigators say the man went back into the trailer, got his gun, and shot one of the four men, grazing him on the ear and shooting him on the leg. They say the other three males went on to beat the man and take his gun. Now, they tell us that man could have been shot in the face and near his lower back, but from the amount of blood, it was hard to tell on scene. They add there was enough shell casings on the ground to believe so. Now, police did tell us those involved in this morning's incident are all residents of this RV park. It's important to mention the three other men were taken into custody. Now, Mark, Stephanie, the case continues to be under investigation. Of course, we'll be following up as more information is made available. Reporting for GMSA, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. In Seguin, the lanes of eastbound I-10 at the State Highway 123 bypass are finally open this morning. That's after a fiery crash that killed three people. This happened around 3 yesterday afternoon. Seguin police say a big rig lost its load, which made the road slick. Another semi-truck tried to swerve out of the way, but hit another vehicle in the process and then crashed into a guardrail. That sparked a massive fire that could be seen for miles. Officers say the accident involved five vehicles in total, two of which caught fire. The victim's identities are not known at this time. This is a live look at Kabul International Airport this morning, where it is 3.36 in the afternoon. Evacuations there have resumed as the U.S. military prepares for more potential attacks after those deadly bombings yesterday. The militant group ISIS-K is claiming responsibility. The coordinated attack killed 13 U.S. service members and at least 95 Afghans. The Biden administration facing a barrage of criticism. The website Politico claims U.S. officials actually gave the Taliban a list of Americans and Afghan allies in order to grant them access to Kabul International Airport. President Biden says there have been occasions where the U.S. military contacted the Taliban to allow certain people through security. At the state capitol in Austin, Republicans advanced new voting rules late last night. The bill includes a ban on drive through voting and empowering poll watchers. This after protests by Democrats who are recently returning from a 38-day walkout. The nearly 50-page bill passed the Texas House on a 79-37 to mostly party-line vote. Republican Governor Greg Abbott says he will sign the measure that is on track to reach his desk by early September, if not sooner. U.S. Supreme Court is now allowing evictions to resume nationwide. The ruling now blocks the Biden administration's ban because of the pandemic. According to the Census Bureau data from early August, about three and a half million people said they faced eviction in the next two months. The Supreme Court says the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention lack the authority to reimpose the moratorium and needed authorization from Congress. 
We want to take you back to some more traffic covers now with an intersection that has some parents very worried. Jackson Keller in Montview is right outside Lee High School on the city's northeast side, but some wonder if it's a school zone or a danger zone. Stephen Cavazos is in the traffic lab and he went looking for answers. Good morning again. Hey, good morning. Stuff. Yeah, some say it is just a traffic nightmare just outside Lee High School. One parent even says it's every man, woman and student for themselves. A number of traffic issues have been spotted at that intersection of Jackson Keller and Montview and Northeast ISD is now addressing those concerns. A spokeswoman for the district does tell me the principal is aware of the traffic issues that plague that area. Right now, there is only one way of entering traffic and one way for exiting traffic, which can obviously be tough for drivers to navigate through. And in a response to that and other traffic concerns, a police officer with the district began patrolling that intersection on Monday of this week. I did speak to Jack DeForest, who is the executive director of transportation with the district days before the new school year. He also reminds drivers to be vigilant and patient when driving through those school zones. Give some space and some time. And, you know, typically those school zones aren't more than a couple of hundred yards long. And so if, uh, Drivers can just slow down. It's not a big uh, delay in their morning commute, and uh, it could save a child's life. Wise words, Jack. And while there is a police officer patrolling that area or monitoring that intersection, we should say the district will continue to look for other options if that situation does not improve. And, of course, we are going to have more on this story coming up later today at noon. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. Right now, 609, about 76 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, fire crews in Northern California have their hands full with the new blaze. We're going to have those details. And staying over on the West Coast, a terrifying task for Washington State wildlife crews who destroyed a massive murder hornet nest. And taking a look outside with a live cam, we're in the 70s right now, expected to hit the 90s, but we are expecting some rain chances today and tomorrow. We'll be right back. 613, welcome back to GMSA. Now to this frightening sight in Washington State. We're learning more about that murder hornet nest found north of Seattle. Wildlife officials say that nest contained nine layers of comb and hundreds of hornets inside. Here's ABC's Andrea Fujii. This morning, renewed concern about the threat of Asian giant hornets, also known as murder hornets, after this large nest was found in Washington state. Inside, a giant queen and nearly 1,500 hornets in all stages of life. A few of us who were working very tight in the area um, were approached by the hornets and they did actually attempt to sting us this time. State officials vacuumed the hornets out from inside a dead tree and found nearly 70 of them outside the tree. It's the first nest found in the U.S. this season and was nearly three times the size of the last nest found in 2020. A homeowner nearby alerted authorities after the hornets were seen attacking paper wasps and other insects. She had reported that uh, she observed them actually attacking and carrying off single honeybees that were foraging on her sunflowers. They're called murder hornets because they can conduct mass attacks on honeybees, which are crucial for pollinating crops and other plants, destroying hives in a matter of hours. The hornets are not known to be aggressive to humans, but their stings can kill. In Japan, the hornets have been known to kill up to 50 people a year. Washington state officials say they've received two reports of what may have been stings. This just means intense pain, overwhelming swelling. And in one instance, uh, the report last year of the, the person was kind of out of commission for a few days after this sting. Officials believe more nests are out there and are urging residents to notify them of any new sightings right away. Andrea Fuji, ABC News. Steph's right, those those insulated suits look like stormtrooper gear almost. They, they do. They look like in the, they're in the Ewok far, forest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, we're buzzing about something mm -hmm. on a much lighter note, and that would be uh, a birth in the Cavazos family. Oh, yeah, that's Congrats. right. And uh, we're, I think we're going to get to that photo in a minute. So, okay. yeah, there oh. she is. Oh, yeah, really my niece, uh, Emma Blake, was born on Wednesday. Uh, she surprised us all honestly a week earlier so in true diva fashion i guess you could say and uh yeah i think she looks like her uncle over here but yeah just yeah. congratulations to my sister my brother-in-law and my nephew drew who became a big brother as well they're in love and the family's over the moon happy right now well congratulations Beautiful. to you uncle yeah. steven well they call me uncle jay middle name's jacob so it's uncle jay right now okay until they can say steven can, can we, no we won't call you that no <laughs> you can call me steve 
<laughs> she <laughs> is beautiful. Thank you, guys. Thank you. We're really happy. Uh, let's go ahead and get to that traffic, though. I-10 at ProBand. Uh, we showed you this a little bit earlier right now, and this is a uh, stall reported there in those eastbound lanes, and you can see that uh, we do have a hero truck out there, possibly with first responder. Some flares out there as well, indicating the shoulder is blocked off, but that traffic is picking up right now, so uh, be on the lookout for that. Move over and slow down. Again, that is off I-10 eastbound at Pro Bant. And as morning is picking up, we are seeing those stalls uh, still being reported here off Loop 410 northbound at Marbach and another stall reported here off I-35 northbound at McCullough. And as we take a wider look at things, it uh, looks like another one may have just popped up there off Loop 410. So check those vehicles before hitting the roadway, uh, especially as we get more folks out there. We know that it could be a little bit dangerous if you have some trouble on the highway. So again, check those cars before getting out there this morning. One last look at I-10 at ProBand flashing lights, road flares. You know what to do. Move over and slow down. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. And Mike's uh, superpower this morning is he can summon a school bus with a click of a button. All right. <laughs> yes, I can. And speaking of birthdays and things like that, got to give a big shout out to Justin. Justin. Justin Horn's Justin birthday, Horn's birthday, 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 today. birthday awesome. today, too. He is. Can you hear me in there, Justin? He's in the newsroom right over oh, that direction. So you here already. Yeah, he should, he's usually. Usually hear about this. <laughs> He'll come in here and say, stop talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, 76 degrees and uh, partly cloudy skies this morning. And then later on this afternoon, we are going to have more scattered showers and thunderstorms. Some folks got some decent storms yesterday. A lot of us did not, although we still keep the rain chances around through the weekend. So hopefully at one point or another, we will all see a little bit of rain. Cool, very cool looking picture. And uh, I love the caption. It says J.J. Abrams. Eat your heart out. Nice. It does look like something from some, I don't know, sci-fi movie or something. Very neat looking picture. Thank you much for that. And uh, we're not seeing the glow of the sunrise as of yet. It's going to be uh, coming up in just about, oh, 50 minutes or so. And there are a few showers that are showing up on radar right now. Well off to the east, even a couple of uh, thunderstorms out there being pushed in. There is a disturbance uh, just kind of off the, the coast, which is pushing some of these on in here. Even around Hallettsville, we've got a couple of these and a lot more down there along the coast. So this little disturbance has nothing to do with Tropical Storm Ida, but this is going to to help with some of our rain around here. And the reason for this is the high, which has been sitting kind of right on top of us, has moved on out. So it's sort of opening up the door for these sea breeze showers and these disturbances to move on in here. So even throughout the rest of the morning and by the afternoon, we are going to see more of this rain popping up, a couple of them throughout the morning and by late morning. And then, of course, once things heat up even more in the afternoon, more are going to be developing. And then once the sun goes down, things are going to start to settle down a little bit. There still may be a few leftover showers around here, even into the uh, evening hours. And then tomorrow, we will do it all over again. More scattered showers and a few thunderstorms around here. So again, not every, each individual day, not everybody sees rain, but take all three days into account. And hopefully, like I said, by when it's all said and done, everybody's going to see some rain. All right, down here very quickly, that is Tropical Storm Ida, 45 mile per hour winds, and it will work its way into the Gulf of Mexico. It is still forecast to stay well to the east of us, and it is also forecast to become a Category 3 storm by the time it makes land sometime on Sunday, which is going to be right around pretty much just heading in toward New Orleans, and then it's going to move up into the Mid-South and into the Tennessee Valley. 88 degrees today at noon. Couple of showers, couple of thunderstorms around the area. A few more later on today. 94 high temperature. So we are going to be closer to the normal high. Same thing over the weekend. We will see more showers and storms around here. And then once Ida makes land, our rain chances pretty much just go almost to nil because we're going to be on the, uh, the non-rainy side of that. That's also going to help to heat us up. Heat for September. Yep. And Labor Day. Yep. Yeah, it looks like right now it's going to be a fairly toasty Labor Day. So. All right, we will prepare. Thank you, Mike. 620, about 76 degrees here on GMSA. And still ahead on GMSA, high school football is underway in South Texas. We're going to bring you some stats from one of the matchups last night. Plus, we're going to tell you how you can watch some of tonight's games. No matter what sometimes keeps you up, Nature Made helps you win the night. Our melatonin gummies are scientifically developed to help you fall asleep faster naturally. Nature Made, the number one pharmacist recommended vitamin and supplement brand. Hey there, Robert Larson here. 
You know, with Simply Safe, you get comprehensive, professionally monitored home security without having to leave your house or have anyone to come install it. You simply order it online, it gets delivered to your door, and you can set it up yourself in just a few minutes. Imagine that. So take it from an expert. Get Simply Safe and protect your home, your family, and anything else you need to keep a close eye on. Is Olay better than your clean beauty? Olay has 99% pure niacinamide. It's derm tested, and now it's cleanest formula with hydration that beats the $400 cream. Try tested, never bested. Shop at Olay.com. In this morning's GMA First Look, a new warning from federal health officials telling ABC News exclusively they are alarmed about a dramatic rise in reports that fake vaccination cards may be flooding the market. We are seeing it be widespread. And part of that is because it's being done across social media and e-commerce. And authorities say they're concerned these fake cards are popping up at colleges like the University of North Carolina. Students who don't attest to their vaccination, they're required to undergo weekly testing. And so students are submitting these fake vaccination cards in order to get around this weekly testing. UNC responding to ABC News that students who provide false information may face disciplinary action up to suspension. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll tell you how hackers are offering to alter government databases with fake vaccination information. With your GMA First Look, I'm Ariel Reshef, ABC News, New York. Our first high school football broadcast on MeTV of Texas Sports Productions kicked off last night with Madison taking on Clemens. Mavs ended up winning this one 14 to 5. Tonight you can catch nine more games, followed by two more Saturday. These streams are free of charge. All you have to do is download the KSAP BGC app and sign up for BGC Insider and you are good to go. San Antonio Missions taking on Midland last night in game three of their series. Teams both get on the board early, but Rockhounds end up winning. Missions lose a close one 3-2. Series continues tonight, 7.05 out at the Wolf. Good luck. Time now, 625 and about 76 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA. New details on a, uh, an app designed to help blind bus riders here in San Antonio. And the latest on an overnight shooting on the city's southeast side. Katrina Weber will join us live with the details. And Trans Guide. There's uh, flashing lights and looks like some cones or flares. Flares are out right now. 10 at Proband. Stephen will have more on that coming up. appears to be a random shooting has led to some very definite charges for one man. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. The victim in this case, a man who was driving down the street with his family. I'll tell you more about it. The death toll from yesterday's airport attacks continues to rise and more attacks could be coming. We're gonna have the latest. And outside with live cam, wait to see radar down at the coast. Things are getting really active right now. Mike says we do have a chance at showers and storms here in the Alamo City area. Good morning, everybody. It's been a long week. Glad you're with us on this Friday morning. Happy Friday. Thanks for joining us. It is August 27th. It is uh, Justin's birthday. So happy Yay. birthday, Justin. Happy birthday, Justin Horn. He's here right now, right? Yes. He should be. All right. He's usually here by about this time. Okay, so. we'll hit him up at 9 and give him personal birthday yeah meetings. but knowing him he's ignoring us he's just got his nose to the grindstone working on the just working and everything. And yes yeah. indeed so you guys have a lot to focus on today yeah yeah and the great thing is more rain chances and between the three of us one got rain yesterday. Some of those showers and thunderstorms, that was Mark and, uh, well, just an early birthday gift for him. He got rain, but that's going to be the case again today where most folks don't see rain. But if you do, you could have a couple of uh, decent downpours out there. There's the glow of the sunrise this morning. Temperatures are in the upper 70s. And yeah, we were just talking about radar and already a few uh, showers, even a couple of uh, 
A couple of thunderstorms are showing up on radar. There is a disturbance out here in the Gulf of Mexico. It's got nothing to do with Tropical Storm Ida, but the high pressure, which has kind of moved on in here or had moved in, kept us on the hot side for the past week, couple of weeks, that's getting on out. So that's opening up the door for some of this to move in, and we will continue to see some of these showers and thunderstorms Tim. popping up throughout the late <clears throat> morning hours, and then also going into uh, this afternoon, more of those will be popping up. So warm and humid today. A couple of uh, showers around even by late morning, then scattered showers and thunderstorms this afternoon will be in the mid 90s. Same thing tomorrow, same thing on Sunday, scattered showers and thunderstorms mid 90s. So odds are in our favor. If you don't get rain one day, maybe when it's all said and done, most everybody will see some rain. But then next week we are going to be heating up. So looks like September is going to be starting off on the hot side. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, anything big going on in the highways? Hey, good morning, Mike. Maybe an iced coffee instead of a hot coffee in September. Sounds better. That's a good Not, idea. Yeah, 90 West at Zazamoto getting off to a busier start. Uh, flashing lights there at I-10 at ProBand. We'll get to that in just a moment, but want to give you a big look around uh, town, seeing how things are shaping up for this morning commute. I-37 at Pecan Valley does show a few folks out there, but as you saw from that shot at Trans Guide, let's go ahead and bring it there off of I-10 at ProBand. You can see, yeah, we do have those flashing lights out there. Traffic a little bit slow and some road flares indicating that there is a closure there on that shoulder lane, and that is because a stall has been reported out there of I-10 eastbound at ProBand. It's been there for quite a while. I'd say almost an hour now that we've been seeing uh, some assistance being provided to that driver out there. So as always a reminder, move over, slow down when you see those flashing lights because we are working, uh, tech stock crews and police officers are working to make the road safer for your morning commute. Right now, the the morning though has been pretty green. We did have a few stalls around town that have since cleared out. Uh, these uh, are actually have already cleared out from our system. They should be cleared out from our system because nothing's showing up on the trans guy that's going to be causing any issues for that morning drive. And let's go ahead and take a look at these inbound times while we can. 26 coming in from 35 and New Braunfels, 28 from I-10 and Seguin right now. And if you're coming in from Laverne, it's 24 minutes. So uh, nothing too big that's going to cause any delays right now. But if you are driving through these eastbound lanes of I-10, your pro band, just use caution and we're watching things close. Mark Seff. Thanks, Stephen. A man will have to answer to criminal charges and provide some answers as to why he allegedly fired shots at a family at random. One person was hit by the gunfire overnight. The suspected shooter was arrested. Katrina Weber is live downtown with that story. And Katrina, we understand the victim was a man who was traveling with his family. That's right. That man was in his pickup with his wife and baby when two bullets tore into his shoulder. Now, he was able to drive to a nearby HEB in the 4100 block of South New Braunfels and call for help, and San Antonio police responded. The family told officers they had been driving in a nearby neighborhood on a street called Monticello Court. When this happened after one this morning, the victim was taken to a hospital. The shooter ran away. A Bear County Sheriff's deputy who happened to be in the area noticed a man running down the street and chased after him. That deputy cornered him in the backyard of a home and had to use his taser to take him into custody. And investigators believe he is the shooting suspect. They also believe that the shooting was done at random, that the two men didn't even know each other. But there's no word yet on why the shooter allegedly did this. Reporting live from downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. In, Afg in Afghanistan, the death toll is rising after two devastating attacks outside the gates of Kabul's International Airport. You're now looking live at Washington, D.C. of the White House. This morning, the flag is at half staff for the victims of those attacks. At least 95 Afghans confirmed dead, along with multiple U.S. service members. ISIS-K has claimed responsibility for the attacks, and the Department of Defense says more attacks are imminent. That could mean everything from rocket attacks to suicide bombings, either by car bomb or vest, like what happened yesterday. U.S. officials say they're hunting down the attackers at the same time they're trying to prevent more attacks, even turning to the Taliban for help and even sharing intelligence. We have to have a productive relationship with the Taliban going forward if we have any chance of getting the thousands that we leave behind when we do go out in the future. And the only way we can do that is if we abide by the agreement that's been negotiated at this point. Tens of thousands of people have been evacuated from the airport by the U.S. military and NATO allies, but there's no plan right now for additional U.S. troops and the August 31st deadline for troops to leave remains.
To the latest now on the coronavirus, the Texas Supreme Court ruling mass mandates in Bear County cannot continue, but the city and county do plan to fight that decision in the fourth court of appeals. Meanwhile, the Bear County District Attorney says he will not prosecute schools who choose to mandate masks because the Texas Education Agency has said they would allow mask mandates as well. And taking a look at COVID cases in Bear County, 45 COVID-related deaths reported in the past two days. Mayor Ron Nierenberg saying each one was preventable with the COVID-19 vaccine. Over in our hospitals, 1,365 COVID patients are hospitalized. 29 patients are children with children under 12 ineligible to get the vaccine. Health officials continue to encourage them to wear a mask. And if you're still in need of the coronavirus vaccine, you can receive the shot for free at your local pharmacy or at pop-up clinics in San Antonio. We're going to have a full list of locations on our website at ksat.com. And it's a new mobile app that will assist via bus riders, especially the blind, who will have more accessibility to bus routes and bus stops. Congressman Joaquin Castro has requested $900,000 in federal funding to help launch the technology here in San Antonio. Sarah Costa spoke with a blind via bus rider about the necessity for the program. Right now, if you are blind or visually impaired and you don't have a good grasp on how the via transit system works, then getting around can be extremely difficult. It's why VIA will launch a new program to help not just blind riders, but all riders help them use its bus system. The program is a mobile app called NaviLens. The app uses audible GPS to plot your route of where you need to go step by step. Once a user gets to the bus stop, there will be signs with the NaviLens QR codes. The user can point their phone at the code and it will instruct you if you are at the correct stop. The codes can be registered 12 times the distance than other QR codes, and it doesn't have to be captured straight on. The user can capture it on the side or just part of it, and it will be read. Athalie Malone is blind and on the VIA Board of Trustees. She says this is so important because if you don't have your independence, especially when it comes to transportation, she said you can feel lost and alone. Because we cannot drive, so we need the transit system. And over the years, the transit system has become more knowledgeable, more open, and now they have taken another step to make it even more easy, for, easier for us to become independent. VIA will launch a pilot program of Navi Lens this fall and hopes to have it ready in the future. Joaquin Castro requested $900,000 in federal funds for the annual Congress budget to help put up the needed signage with QR codes at the over 6,000 bus stops in San Antonio. Those funds pouse in the House representatives and are currently in the Senate. You can read more about this program right now on KSAT.com. Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. In Northern California, the Caldor Fire continues to burn anything in its path. More than 22,000 people living in South Lake Tahoe are threatened by this blaze. Strong winds are intensifying the flames as crews there scramble to contain the fire. The blaze has scorched over 136,000 acres as of last night. And more than 600 buildings have been destroyed. Right now, 639, about 76 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, the touching story about our executive producer's son who got to hear his mom's and dad's voices for the very first time. And welcome back at 642. Being able to hear the voices of his parents, that's something that KSET executive producer Jason Foster's two-year-old son, Jameson, is getting to experience for the first time this week. That's right. You may see videos like this on social media all the time, but this one hits close to home for us. On Tuesday, Jameson's cochlear implants were activated, and he was able to hear sounds and voices for the first time. A big first step for this brave two-year-old. It makes noise, huh? Hearing and responding to his father's voice, two-year-old Jameson Foster was not able to do that until now. Although born healthy, Jameson was born without the ability to hear. Probably for a good portion of his life, he wasn't hearing all of the sounds that you and I hear. Going through test after test, doctors at Sunshine Cottage finally determined that hearing aids would not be enough to help Jameson hear. And they recommended Jameson undergo surgery to get cochlear implants. Cochlear implants are a rehabilitative process, so it takes time and practice 
practice listening to build the listening skills, um, even to find sounds, learn your name, localize, um, all of those things we kind of take for granted every day. After undergoing surgery two weeks ago, the implants were activated on Tuesday in a process called mapping, enabling Jameson to hear sounds and his parents' voices for the very first time. Jameson. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Jameson. He did really, really well today for our, his first day hearing with his cochlear implants. Um, really, his first day hearing people's voices. He was really brave, and not only that, but he was playing musical instruments. He was talking a little bit using his yeah. voice, yeah. which was really exciting. Yeah. He was listening to his mom and dad and finding their voices. All of those are really great. great way to start off his new hearing, his better hearing. So we're really excited for him. And coming up at GMSA at 9, we will be talking to Jameson's parents, Jason and B. Foster, who will share their emotional journey of watching their son here for the very first time. Oh, wow. It's a big week for the Fosters. Yeah, definitely. We're so glad that it went well. Right now, it's 644 on your Friday morning. Let's get you updated on your morning commute. Good morning. Yeah, as we're inching closer to that rush hour traffic, uh, people can expect some slowdowns here of I-10 at ProBent. Uh, we still have that stalled vehicle that obviously the shoulder lane there is blocked. So let's go ahead and just take, give you a closer look here from this shot over at TransGuide. You can see, yeah, we do still have those road flares out there and some signs indicating for folks to move over and as always slow down, but it has been a morning of stalls. Let's go ahead and show you another one. It's beautiful sunrise there, but actually that just stalled just cleared. Good news there for that driver. Awesome. Uh, I saw uh, but that's all that we were trying to show you there was off US 90 eastbound before I 35. It looks like that driver's already on their way, uh, but we still have not too far from there is that stall off I 10 eastbound at Pro Band. So a little bit of a slowdown that we're seeing this morning as we're getting everything started and uh, not many issues out on the roads. It's just been a few stalls that we've been seeing here and there, and those have been clearing up. But as always, a quick reminder here, the Texas Hero program does provide some amazing services, including gasoline, adding gasoline and water to those stranded cars before minor vehicle repairs, jump starting batteries, and even providing drinking water and cell phone services to stranded motorists. And again, you must be stranded on a highway to receive that free assistance. Their number 210-732-HERO. Good program there. Great resource. But right now, traffic picking up here at US 90 at 35. Just check those vehicles before you hit the roadways. All right. There's a guy's birthday today. The yep. guy's so tall here at KSAT. He, he has his own atmosphere. Yeah. Heck of a Justin. heck of a basketball player. Uh, happy <laughs> birthday, Justin. Happy Justin. birthday, Justin. Happy birthday, Justin. Yes, he is here. I just saw him in the newsroom. Yeah? <laughs> Did you tell him to, of look, to look up? <laughs> of course. I don't know if he's watching or not. So right. I thought we were going to see a basketball picture. But there you go. He's climbing over the, the backboard right there, I think. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Happy, happy birthday, birthday, Justin. Happy Horn. birthday. Be part of our, our weather family and our, uh, of course, KSAT family. Yeah. Great guy. Great man. And just mm -hmm. heck of a good friend. So happy birthday, buddy. All right. Uh, I love the picture. It's kind of a lonely picture, isn't it? With that lone windmill out there. In that Survive. Tree. Survive. That's great looking, though. I like Thank you very much for that. All right, got some clouds well off to the east. Clear skies uh, to the west of those and well off to the east. We are starting to see a few showers, even a couple of uh, thunderstorms that are working their way to the west. And this is a, obviously a really good sign. We don't have that high sitting on top of us. That's the, you know, we've been talking all summer long how that was not really present, then sort of moved on in. That's why for the past uh, week, couple of weeks, we've had very hot temperatures. We've had almost zero rain except for the past couple of afternoons. And so now the door is basically open for these disturbances and this disturbance off here in the Gulf to throw these showers on in here and throughout the rest of the morning. And then as the afternoon heats up, we are going to see more of these showers and a couple of thunderstorms around the area. So here's computer model. More of those are going to be moving in here. And again, not everybody will see rain today, but at least rain chances will stick around for the next couple of days. So if you don't get any rain today, maybe tomorrow, maybe on Sunday. Same situation, though, tomorrow, where again, throughout the afternoon, as things uh, do heat up a little bit more, we do see more of these showers and storms out here. So latest on Tropical Storm Ida, which uh, maybe even by later on today, if not early tomorrow morning, will become a hurricane. 45 mile per hour winds right now. It's going to work its way across Cuba. And then by, uh, well, by tomorrow morning early, 70 mile per hour winds, it has to hit 74 to become a hurricane. So it looks like sometime um, maybe late morning or early afternoon will become a category one hurricane and the forecast is still taking it in pretty much 
uh, direct hit on New Orleans is where it's aiming at, and it also looks like it is going to become a Category 3 storm just as it makes landfall on Sunday and then work its way up into the Mid-South and off to the uh, Tennessee Valley. So again, it's not going to have any direct impact on us indirectly since the rainy side of this storm or any storm is the right hand side in relation to this direction of travel. The left hand side is where you get the sinking air. So that will indirectly help to heat things up here once we get into the first and middle part of next week. 88 degrees at noon today. A couple of showers, a couple of thunderstorms. We're seeing some right now. A few more, uh, especially off to the east this morning. And then later on today, more scattered storms. 94 for a high temperature. Tomorrow, same thing. Decent chance of rain. Same thing on Sunday. And then rain chances are pretty much going to be getting out of the picture by next week at leftover one Monday. And then we do heat up middle of the week. Heat. Yeah. In September. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Cause <laughs> Shocker. Because when, Wednesday's first of September already. Yes. I think that's right. Let's yep. see. Yep, sure is. Thank you, Mike. Right now we're at 649, about 76 degrees. With the coronavirus pandemic forcing us indoors, there's a good chance that many people fell out of their gym routines. Tomorrow on GMSA, some tips on how to get your heart's health back in shape. Back outside with live cam, and I'm hoping this is the sunrise shot. Yeah, so look off in the Beautiful. distance there. Those are actually some of the cloud tops for storms about 75 to 100 miles east of San Antonio. We'll be right back. Good morning. Coming up on GMA, we'll have the latest on the crisis in Afghanistan. The U.S. is bracing for another act of terror after the deadliest attack on U.S. forces there in more than a decade. It left 13 U.S. service members dead and dozens of Afghans also dead. The president vowing to retaliate. We're going to have more on the critical situation this morning. And I will be headed to the Gulf Coast because we will have a hurricane by Sunday into Monday. That and so much more right here on GMA. San Antonio police responding to a shooting that's left two men in the hospital. Good morning. I'm Jonathan Cotto. Police responding to the 13,500 block of Donup Road early this morning at around 2.13. Investigators on scene tell us a man came out from his trailer after hearing a pickup truck pull up, making a lot of noise. They say that man, believed to be in his 30s, told the four men in the pickup truck to keep it down. One of those men got down from the truck and punched him in the face, knocking him to the ground. Now, investigators say that man went back into the trailer, got his gun, and shot one of the four men, gracing him on the ear and shooting him on the leg. They say the other three males went on to beat the man and take his gun. They tell us that man could have been shot in the face and near his lower back, but from the amount of blood, it was hard to tell on scene. They add there was enough shell casings on the ground to believe so. It's important to mention the other three men were taken into custody. This case continues to be under investigation and, of course, will update you as more information is made available. Reporting, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. The deadly attacks at the Kabul airport sending shockwaves across the world as the race to meet the August 31st deadline inches closer. Coming up this morning on GMSA at 9, we are live at the Center for Refugee Services here in San Antonio for a look at how this crisis is having an impact on our community and how you can help. It's five till. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. A lot of traffic there on I-10 and ProBand. Yeah, it's been like that for almost an hour. Mark, Steph, one last look here at I-10 and ProBand does show that we do have uh, some flashing lights out there indicating we do have a stall. Let's go ahead and see if we can get to that a little bit quicker here. With the There you go. Uh, we do see that the shoulder lane is blocked right there from because there is that stall reported. But we are seeing some slowdowns. I-10 eastbound at ProBand and a crash reported right here, Mike, off Loop 1604 southbound at US 90. It started off pretty quiet, but it's shaping up to be pretty busy now. Hoping the weather looks good, though. Uh, looks good as far as some rain chances. Uh, looking off to the east of us, we do have some showers and even a couple of thunderstorms. Disturbance off the coast is going to continue to throw some of that energy in our direction. So uh, another decent chance for rain today. 88 at noon, 94 for a high temperature and pretty much the same thing over the weekend. Then we heat up going into next week to finish off August and start September. Here rain. on KSAT all weekend long for uh, the latest on the weather. We want to wrap up the newscast with a live look at Flag staff at the White House here in Military City, USA. Our thoughts and prayers with the families of those lost in Afghanistan yesterday.